Welcome to an hour about the James Built. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to be leaving the galley alone for today and turning my attention to this area here, the midship's cabin. Right, the diesel stove has been on again quite a bit recently. Obviously it's been cold in here and I've needed stuff to dry. Um, and a while ago I got it had the tank filled up and Kevin and Emma are just ahead of me so I'm going to get it filled up again and see how much diesel that stove has consumed over the last few weeks. I'm in charge of telling Kevin when the right number is. I'm looking for 47. What is it, 4717? 42. 45. 46. 47. 1. 4723. I will put that on the house. Okay. Um, that's only half a tank. So we're going to put another 50 quid in because there's quite a lot of room for diesel bug to grow in there. Let's keep it topped up. Routing makes a lot of sawdust. Okay, the reason why I'm doing the midships cabin next is because the two beds which are gonna go in here are obviously gonna be six foot long, which is then gonna determine where this bulkhead's gonna go, which then determines where the dinette can be and how big the dinette can be. So. It all goes, basically starts from this measurement here. Um, and my plan is to have a kind of two foot, two and a half foot wide bed there at that kind of, basically I need it at the lowest level possible. Um, and then another bed, kind of maybe that height there. So I've seen quite a few layout designs for bunk beds on narrow boats and it seems to be uh, but the lower bunk is a little bit lower than a normal boat on a, or a normal bed on a boat. Um, so the reason why I have beds slightly raised on boats is just because obviously the heat um, and you know kind of get a bit more storage underneath it, I guess. So, but there's going to be a radiator there anyway, so the heat in this room should be all right. It's really near the stove, so I'm not too worried about that. But. Uh, yeah, so I just need to work out the frame. At the moment, I haven't really worked out exactly how this bunk is going to be. I don't really want it to be you know, always in position because of this window, but I'd also like it that this room here can be a work area. So if that bunk was to come down, if this is a lower bunk, um, lower than normal, then when that bunk comes down and rests on top of that one, with the mattresses sandwich in the middle, then that would be a work surface at kind of a decent height. That's kind of what I'm thinking, uh, but I don't really know yet, but I've got to start making up the frame anyway. Pipe works in. When I said on the plans, when I kind of showed you guys the plans of this, my original idea was to have this at two foot wide and everyone said it really should be two and a half foot wide. So that's two and a half foot. Um, well, it will be when the bed's up at this level here, because there's an inch difference basically on the slope of that wall. So at the kind of mattress level, it would be two and a half foot wide there, which gives me kind of that space there for a cupboard, which isn't the end of the world. That kind of works out all right. Um, and the wider this is, then for things to be in line, the more space therefore I'm gonna have up there for the narrower of the bunks, um, which obviously that top one is gonna be pretty narrow. So uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna do it at two and a half, keep all you guys happy. And uh, whoever is on the lower bunk, give them slightly more room.
that's the two lengths cut. Um, so I'm going to learn from what I've done on slow patrol. Uh, so basically what I want to be able to do is the storage underneath this, I want it to be in boxes that I can slide in and out. So I don't want a rail on the floor. Uh, I need to support it obviously at the back here, at the front and somewhere in the middle. And then have one on that wall. That's easy to support and start building it up that way. In terms of dimensions, I think I've worked it out. So this bed here, the lower one, can be a height of 60, which is okay, because that's quite a nice thing to sit on. That's kind of ergonomically all right. Then that will give it, uh, sorry. Basically, I want the second bunk to be around that height there. And the gap between the two, I need to be about 70, because then it's not, yeah, it needs to be higher than that. So 60 comes up to there. And then yeah so it kind of needs to be around that level there bottom of the window which might be all right um kind of if it was up that level to be honest i could kind of make my piece of that being fixed in place so obviously it's going to be narrower i don't know i've got to work that out maybe i don't know hinge it up so i can kind of stow it out the way Anyway, let's get these in place. So I need to make some end supports. Right, I've just come into Slow Patrol to check out the height of all this stuff. And the mattress height is at 60 and the bed height's at 50. And I think that's fine height wise. Um, the girls struggle to get on it, um, the little girls. But yeah, that's kind of a decent height and storage underneath is kind of quite spacious for that. So that's all right. Right, and in the dinette, on slow patrol where i sleep when the kids are in the other room uh it's a mattress height of 50 and a bed height of 40 so i might have to rethink the overall height of the one on 58. right i'm trying to work out the proportions of this i think if you're going to be on the bottom bunk then the top bunk is going to be a height of 60 above uh, no, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's going to be above 60 from where you are. So I'm just going to see what that would feel like or look like. So I'll be lying like that and it'd be there. That's not horrific. I mean, it's not exactly spacious to get up or anything, but it's not horrific. Certainly for a kid. I think that's what I'm going to be able to do. So first bed at 40, mattress at 50, then you've got a height there of 60 in between, then the second bed, and then the mattress, and then whoever's on the top, like Ivy, she has a slightly bigger gap of 70 because she's on the upper bunk. Right, I've got those two uprights in. Um, that's not attached yet. But now I'm looking at it, I'm wondering whether Instead of it hinging upwards, whether it was to hinge down, which would make it easy, because it's quite a lot of void there for it to kind of hang downwards. And then I'm wondering if it could then, the top of that, which would have a mattress on it, if that was to come down, the mattress would be on that side and be like a back support if that's a bench. That could kind of work. And then it doesn't eclipse the window it's the right kind of angles and then just hinge it up and then clamp it into the cupboard which will be here and one there hmm right that's where i've got up to so far i'm running out of cls though and i've realized i need to put a central one in as well so um yeah i probably need to nip back to the hardware store and pick up some more material but i'm going to put a brace in across there now and then that'll take kind of the central one which i'll pop out and get and then i'll probably need to put in a middle support there and another one in the middle there right i've got myself some more cls so i've attached the central support in uh just laying down some off-cut ply obviously i'm going to use slats on this and not 
I could use ply and then put holes in it, but uh, it should be kind of 18 mil ply ideally for that. And um, I haven't got any of that and it's quite expensive. So I'm just gonna use slats, which I haven't got either at the moment. But what I do have on Slow Patrol is a mattress. Let's get that on. Right, well, it's not exactly the Ritz, but it kind of uh, gives me an idea of uh, kind of how it is. Uh, this is a mattress height of 50, so this is the same as the dinette on Slow Patrol. It's obviously, if it was just being used as a seat, well, then yeah, that's kind of perfectly ergonomic. Um, so yeah, I'm now thinking if this bed here was to hinge downwards and occupy this area here, then it could be an actual like, seating area or like dumping ground. And then take the mattress off, stow that somewhere. And then I've got like a really, really low workbench. So I could get on my knees and work. I don't know. God knows. Um, but I guess the most important thing is that it's a uh, double bed or, you know, twin bunk beds. Um, so I'm thinking now what I should probably do is make up the frame for the upper one so it kind of so I know roughly what I'm dealing with because I can't work out angles and I can't seem to get my head around it I've got to make it and then offer it up basically but it's all pretty straightforward but yeah this is all right height wise we're exactly the same as the dinette Obviously the walls on this boat are slightly different to the dinette and on that one, so well for the whole boat, so the gunnels on this boat are higher up. So there's a bit more wall space there than I'm used to. It means I can see all this shit underneath here, which obviously I still need to sort out. That's where the electric channels are going. Um It can't really be any lower, but I'm nervous now that if the next bed was up at that height. Well, it's not the end of the world. Is it? That's close. Yeah, it's not too close. But I mean, getting up is not easy. You'd have to roll out. But then, you know, it's mostly going to be kids using it, I guess. Well, actually, when it's in bunk bed form, yeah, it'll only be kids. But if that was down, if there was another piece hanging down like that, Doesn't really make this very comfortable, does it? It's quite narrow, that is. As a single bed. Right, I'm going to put my theory to the test using a bit of scrap ply and some basic hinges. So if you have yeah, it, grab the bit bottom of the thing like that. I'm just putting my theory to the test of having it hinging on there. So bend it down, let it go down to where it would be. So obviously I could have it there, but I could stop it so it stops like that. And then it's a natural thing if it was to be like a seat, yeah, like a backrest for a seat. So I could put it right back and get it out of the way. If I want to use that as the world's lowest workbench. But then that might hurt your back. <laughs> and then I put it up again. So what I've got to do is make sure that the next frame kind of sits within that and then there'll be a cupboard there, a cupboard where Rob's standing and that will secure in, there'll have to be some kind of, what do I call it? A poker. A poker. Yeah, some kind of long poker which goes through the cupboard and holds that in place when it's upright so Ivy doesn't fall on top of Matilda. And then pull them out, press it down. So I've just got to double check all these dimensions and stuff, but I think that's going to be alright. Here, yeah, hold that there, let me just... Oh, fuck a duck! <laughs> I should have got a slightly wider one, didn't I? <laughs> Tender Arthur, because he's not going to be, yeah. That's all right. 
Because you could have just pretend you're Arthur. He doesn't need a window. No, he's fine. Yeah, the person on top gets the window, but the person down here gets... Well, this, and this is all right. You kind of roll out in the middle. I reckon that's going to be fine. Well, in the Navy, they have uh, less space than that. Well, exactly. Right. Happy days. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.